Hello, welcome to Megger's technical support video series, Frequently Asked Questions. In this video, we will discuss how to test differential relays in RTMS software. Now let's get started. In this video, I will discuss how to test two winding, three phase motor and generator differential relays. This process is designed to test three phase relays only. Legacy single phase relays should be tested using the appropriate ramp methods described in previous videos. I will be using RTMS in simulation mode today as noted in the yellow background. From the perspective of testing with RTMS software, there is little difference between testing motor and differential generator relays. This is not to say there is no difference in the types of protection, only that Mega attempts to achieve a consistent format for testing transformers, motors, and generators. Now, to get started, select the new test icon and then click on the generator differential button. The differential test feature includes specific help for testing differential relays. The differential quick start fully explains every setting on this page. The differential full help includes the quick start and near the bottom it includes step-by-step -step how to test differential relays. Notice the location of the generator, CTs, and relay. Now I will move to the motor differential test screen. Back to the new test button and select motor differential. Notice it says motor here. There's no other substantial difference in this test page. Now we'll proceed with entering the nameplate information. Before that gets started, choose your nameplate format, ANSI or IEC. You know, the CT ratios can be expressed in 0.5, 1, 2, or 5 in most cases. Select the other CT ratio. You know, the size of the motor or generator and the nominal voltage of the motor or generator. Full load amps are calculated for you based on the voltage and watts. CT secondary current is calculated based on the CT ratio and the full load amps. If your circuit includes auxiliary CTs, then you'll need to enable interposing CTs. Enter the CT ratios as needed. Now we'll move on to the relay settings. Enter the restrained pickup value in per unit, the allowable tolerance when testing, expected trip time and associated tolerance, the prefault value to be applied before beginning the test in percent of full load, the prefault time, how long will this prefault value be applied, the off delay is used in between fault pulses as the relay is tested. Through fault current determines how much current is applied to the relay during the stability test. Simulate breaker causes the test plan to leave current on after a trip is received long enough to simulate the opening time of a breaker. If your relay needs voltage to enable differential protection, select yes and enable the voltage magnitude here. The import settings feature is still under development and cannot be shown today. Fault duration is the length of each fault pulse as the relay is tested. ICT correction is not used for generator and motor differential protection. Nominal current determines if it is calculated based on the protected object, the motor or the generator, or the current transformers. Now select your slope characteristic, line segment, slope through origin, slope through x-axis, slope from base point. If you're not certain, consult the user manual. Next, select your restraint equation. Again, consult your, your manual. You know your unrestrained pickup setting and your slope settings. When ready, Select the check mark to proceed to the test page. 
The stabilization test verifies the relay will not operate for a through fault. It also verifies your test connections and allows you to verify the metering function of the relay. When you're ready to proceed, press the play button. Now use the HMI of the relay or your meter, your software, and enter the values. Remember, I'm in simulation mode today, so I am simply entering the nominal values. Don't forget the phase angles. Proceed on to winding two. And related phase angles. And the restraint currents. Operate currents will generally be at or near zero if everything is wired properly. When complete, click the abort finish button. Stabilization test passed. If you're reading high operate current, then you should press force failure and correct the problem. Now we'll proceed on to the next test, the timing test. When ready to begin the timing test, you may test one item at a time or you may run all timing test. I'm going to run all timing test. Remember, I'm in simulate mode. Simulate is too fast to press the simulate button and the test is complete. Move on to the pickup test. You can perform all pickup tests sequentially or you can pick up one at a time. I'm going to select the first test. Notice the nominal values are shown. Percent errors is declining. Pickup value is increasing. I'm going to click the simulate button to simulate a contact closure. Now I'm going to move to the last test on the list to save time. Once again, you notice the nominal values are shown. Pickup values are changing. As soon as it turns into a, a green, it's a passing test. I will click simulate button. Clearly, you would normally execute all tests, but to save time, this is good enough. Move on to the characteristic slope test. The slope test will apply test at your choosing. Select a place on the first slope, select another location on the second slope, and perhaps one more location slightly higher on the second slope. When you're ready, press the play button and run all slope test. Current is being applied to the relay. When the arrow turns green, I know it's a passing test. That's when your contact should close. I will simulate. It's moving into slope two now. And the final test will begin. And the characteristic slope test is complete. The final test, not everyone runs this, is the characteristic shot test. The shot test is similar to the slope test, but instead of ramping and finding an operate point, it's a go or no go point. So you select the point you want to test, no op and op. We'll do one more, no op and op, and press the play button.
no op passed. Now, I was too slow on that one. And I'll try and get this one. And I missed it, but that's okay. Simulate mode is difficult to get the shot test to pass. All tests are now complete, so let's take a look at the test report. Your nameplate information is here if you put it in. All your settings. And now here's your time, your actual test results. Timing test is on page two. Pickup test, slope test, and then finally the shot test. And now we'll return to the home screen. This concludes testing motor and generator differential relays in RTMS software. Visit the MEGA YouTube channel for more videos including technical webinars, product overviews, and other how-to presentations similar to this one. Contact us for questions or more information about this topic or for any support you may need for your electrical testing.